Good morning, everybody. My name is Sarah Jane. Welcome back to Rogue Radio. Today we'll be talking about Dobby Vanity and how he started his life of pedophilia and crime. And I want to talk about this just because I want to inform a lot of the younger people who don't know his story and don't understand that if they do come become acquainted with him, which is very a very accessible thing because he preys on young girls. I also just want to be able to give them a heads up like, listen, don't be around this person. So for those of you who do not know who Dabby Vanity is, he is the front man and lead singer of Blood on the Dance Floor. It's an old emo band back in 2006. That's where he started. Uh, was in 2006. He's traveled with Jeffree Star, and he's been accused by 21 different women of sexual assault. So, yeah, we're gonna get right into this. Stay tuned. You want to know how I make some unique podcasts? If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. For one, it's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer, and they're easy to use. Anchor will distribute your podcast uh, for free so that it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It is everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download your free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. It's really fun. Come and join the Renegade family, all right? Davi Vanity is a dirty, nasty, disgusting person, and he needs to be stopped before he hurts any other underage children. He is a pedophile. He is somebody that does not need to be near your children. And I don't care if any Davi Vanity fan comes at me. I'm not afraid of you. And two, get out before you are victimized as well. Davi Vanity has been accused by 21 women of sexual assault. And I am very happy to say that Chris Hansen has been on the front lines in this case um, talking about it. Talking about it and interviewing a lot of the women that have been victimized by him. And we get to hear their stories and we get to hear what they've gone through and it is very very good because I know that way back in the day um, with all like the research that I've seen on YouTube um, back then a lot of victims of rape and sexual assault and molestation didn't necessarily have a platform didn't necessarily have a voice to express themselves and have people actually listen and understand them and I don't understand why that this is happening now like this platform and their voice is starting to be heard now um, I would say that it's probably just the day and age where um, we have a thing called rape culture we have a thing I don't even know if that's real or not but there are women that you know are able to use their voice and accuse men of rape and and sexual assault and i'm not all i'm also not saying that every victim i'm not saying that every victim's story is correct i know that some people lie i understand that some women do come forward and say this man raped me when it doesn't even when it never even happened and as far as the Divey Vanity victims and survivors go, I will not know, ever, which one is lying and which one is telling the truth. I am only stating what they have said in their interviews and their point of view. 
so that you can determine for yourself what is the truth and what is not. I do know that women, you know, falsely accuse men of rape for many reasons, for money, for pain and suffering, compensation and everything. But today we are going to be talking about Davy Vanity and what he has been doing and what he's still probably doing now. He came back into social media when he made his new um, YouTube channel called Kawaii Monster. And um, he's also has, he also has like his Instagram the same name as you know, Kawaii Monster. He wants to come back and redeem himself from all of these allegations and everything like that. And don't get me wrong, I I believe that people do deserve a second chance, but I don't believe that Davi Vanity is genuine in this. Just because it looks like he's still doing the same things. There are girls coming out, coming forward, even to the survivors of, you know, Davi Vanity's tactics, saying, hey, he's talked to me. Hey, you know, he, he wants me to do this with him, and he wants me to send pictures of me wearing his merch and stuff. So, no, I don't believe he's changed. I don't believe everything on the media but I don't believe he's changed just by the look of him and just by what he's been doing. And I believe that he needs exploitation in the best way possible as a pedophile. He needs to know that what he's doing is wrong. And when I say the best way, I mean the worst way in order for everybody to know, like, this guy needs to be avoided at all costs. So, there have been some allegations even before the band started, and one of them was a victim named Diane Farrell. And she tuned into a Christian uh, radio show, actually, and... Um, his name was Dawson McAllister. I literally, my face almost paled when I heard this, just because I used to listen to Dawson McAllister all the time. He was on Yes FM all of the time until he decided to go into, like, non-Christian, uh, channels, like, uh, radio stations, like 98.3 or 92.5, uh, in, in my area and start reaching people in, you know, for the people who are listening that aren't Christians. And, and I loved that. And, um, unfortunately he has gone through a lot, uh, as a man of God and he, I don't think he has his, um, radio station anymore. I'd still have to find out, but Dawson McAllister is a wonderful person. I hope he's doing well. But um, Diane Farrell turned into Do tuned into Dawson McAllister's segment, and it is late at night. Um, it doesn't. It didn't like come on until like midnight, I think. And um, she confessed uh, what Davy Vanity has done, and you know how he assaulted her and, and forced her to do oral sex and all of that. And. Dawson McAllister took that very seriously, and uh, the people, I think it was in Colorado, I want to say Colorado, I have it written down somewhere, but um, the police in Colorado, um, you know, had taken it down and everything, and uh, his defense, Davi's defense was, I didn't know she was 14 years old, and somehow evaded the police. So, that really pissed me off. And the one thing that I want to talk about right now is that pedophiles and child molesters and child rapists, they will always prey on the weakness of 
people, of children. Davi Vanity knew that Diane Farrell was shy, that she was on the computer a lot. She didn't have a lot of friends. He preyed on her insecurity to to seem like he was the hero of her life. Like, oh, I'll take care of you. I'll be there for you. And a lot of things happened after that. Um, so, he has... Bef- I'm trying to talk without getting upset. That's one thing that I just... I want to rant and say bad words, but since I am on the air, I do my best not to do that. But um, his patterns, this is his pattern. He preys on insecure girls. He befriends their parents. That way he has the trust of the parents. And his first thing that he really says is like, oh, I can cut your hair for free. I can help, you know, cut your hair and make it look emo and cool and edgy. And then he kind of bribes the parents and the children for like VIP uh, membership and tickets and, and merch and everything. And there you go. The parents are so proud that, you know, their kids are really close to somebody in a band who's famous and that can actually help them make it big and everything. And it, people don't necessarily know knew at the time. They didn't necessarily know at the time that this was happening. And, um, at some point, I think Diane Farrell told her mom, and then they ended up telling the police. And she was 14 years old, and Davi Vanity was 22 at the time. The Colorado police were very lazy at the time. And I don't think it was anybody's fault but theirs. Just because I feel like the point of view of adults way back then... I mean, think about it. Teenagers and children didn't necessarily have a voice until maybe 2018. And that's terrible. I don't... I don't know if this is true, but in in my opinion, in my point of view and perspective, I feel like back in the 90s and back in the 2000s, there were not many teenagers and children listened to by adults because teenagers were never taken seriously. They were looked upon as either troublemakers or very hormonal people. And children either were liars or um, very imaginative and shouldn't be taken seriously. And that, I want to say, that is the burden of a lot of adults now. That, oh, if I, if I would have listened to my daughter, or if I would have listened to my son, this stuff wouldn't have happened. And I'm not trying to say that the adults... Uh, who weren't listening to their children are bad people. I believe that a lot of people make mistakes. I'm just saying back then in that generation, I feel like teenagers and children did not have much of a voice just because of how they were looked upon. And it is very sad because there have been a lot of children silenced because of this perspective. And, um... I feel like a whole lot more could have been done about this case to to spare Diane uh, from all of this. And um, he's denied, or actually no, he has not denied it. Dobby Vanity has not denied that he did something with her. He basically said, oh, I didn't know she was 14. He played dumb. And he got away with it somehow. I, I, honestly, I would have loved to be a fly on the wall just to find out what the heck these policemen were smoking at the time for them to let him go. Like, oh, I didn't know. He was 22 at the time. I mean, dude, no, 
that's gross and later on I guess he got really angry at her and decided to dox her address <laughs> that's great so okay the next one uh, will take up the rest of the podcast for the first part of the series of Dobby Vanity and um, her name is Jessie Slaughter she goes by Damien Leonhart now and she has a they them pronoun but since I am going to be talking about her past and talking about Jessie Slaughter, I will be using she and her pronouns. But I do acknowledge that she has a different gender now. That's fine. But since I'm, be- I'm going to be talking about her past, I am going to be using she and her. So, <sighs> Jessie Slaughter was 10 years old at the time, and... She went to a private party. Um, Davi Vanity, Davi Vanity was 24 at the time. So she met him at a private party where they were playing. And um, her parents were late to pick her up. So she had some extended time with Davi. So, um, yeah. So anyway, he ends up helping her, like, clean the bathroom, like, they were picking up after the show, kind of cleaning the venue and making sure that everything was, you know, good and polished after the show, and they both ended up in the bathroom together, talking, and, um, yeah, let's see. They started talking, uh, it started to gradually progress into sexual things, like, is she experienced with certain things? Davi asks if she did anything with anybody sexual, and that is how, um, she was, she had received her first sexual experience with Davi, and I won't go too much into detail with that. Basically, we all know that Divey Vanity is a very big fiend on oral sex, so the rest of it you can pretty much put together. But from what Damien has said, that back then a lot of band members and a lot of adults back then were actually having sex with teenagers. Doesn't make it right, of course, but in the scene that she was in, it was considered kind of normal. Like, they knew that it was wrong, but they had their reasons for doing the wrong, basically. And that's something that we'll go into later. But, um, Jesse Slaughter ends up um, kind of being instructed in order to do a sexual practice on Davi Vanity, and that was that was her first se- sexual experience. Um, and so, at the time, Damien has recalled that they were lured just by the way he was talking to them, and it is. I feel like that is something that a pedophile does in order to kind of get his way, get their way. And uh, after that, they did seem to be uh, sort of a friends with benefits type of relationship. Um, They both had girlfriends and boyfriends, and that was just normal to them. To Jesse. He was important to her, but she wasn't necessarily important to him. He was a very big part of her life from 2006 all the way up to 2009. She does, or Damien does, uh, kind of point out that in sixth grade, um, that's kind of when a lot of things kind of went down for her, uh, for Jesse Slaughter. So, let's see. He went on tour and got arrested in Colorado. This was from 2007 to 2009. This was the Diane Farrell case. And he said, of course, you know, he was like, oh, I didn't know. She was 14 and he got away with it. And this was during their relationship, uh, Jesse Slaughter and 
died in vanity. That's why I refuted it. Um, if he was arrested, uh, he would have it would have spared Damien from a lot of trauma and uh, yeah, their relationship was very interesting. Uh, I don't like saying relationship just because uh, Jesse Slaughter was 11 years old at, at this time now and that I'm talking about and it is just something I don't like saying relationship. A relationship is meant for adults and you know people of age of the same age range it's just not okay for a 24 year old man to have sex with an 11 year old girl it's just wrong but um back on topic i'm sorry for the little rant it just kind of pissed me off um if he was arrested it would have spared damien from a lot of trauma and throughout their relationship uh, when she was 11 years old, uh, he kind of promised her, like, oh, I'll take you on tour, and, you know, your poetry is great, because she used to uh, write a lot of poetry, and she, you know, had a good voice and everything, and so he kind of made a lot of empty promises to her, and when she kind of spoke up about it, she goes, well, I mean, I see you're on tour, I thought I was supposed to go with you, and he would take her to a couple of shows and that would be it. And, uh, so basically, the, what he, he did not treat her with the best respect at all. Um, of course, I mean, he's a pedophile, what else would you expect? Um, let's see. Okay. Davi Vanity, in one conversation with Jesse Slaughter, he kind of almost defended pedophilia in a way and this is something that I would advise the parents that are listening to really really listen to because this is actually the inside of the mind of a pedophile oh they're mature they know what they're doing like they have the a reason for breaking the law and teens have their own lives and all that stuff. Like, you are not, you have no right to take the innocence of a child and introduce them to a world that they're not ready to have. That's why they call it statutory rape. That's why they call it rape. That's why they call it child molestation, sexual assault, pedophilia. There's a reason why we have these laws. And I don't have any respect for anybody who decides to purposefully deny and deny all of these allegations and also try to normalize it in their own mind so that they can get their own messed up way. I just don't like it. It's, it's awful. So at some point, Jesse Slaughter decides to talk, talk about, um, her relationship with Davi with one of her friends and her friend posted on sticky drama outing her relationship with Davi and this is where it got worse Davi ended up finding out about this because he was also kind of in charge of her MySpace page he kind of taught her uh, how to do all the coding and all the fancy stuff to make her MySpace look cool and everything, and so he was kind of in charge of her MySpace at the time. He was on the Jesse Slaughter's mom with, um, her mom didn't believe it, her father didn't believe it, and the reasoning for her parents, let me say this, the reasoning for her parents to accept Davi into Jesse Slaughter's life was because they thought it was a good thing that she had friends older than her. With the interview with Chris Hansen, she said this, she said, my parents were hippies. They were very lenient on certain things, I think. Happy that she had a friend that her parents were very, was able to help her out in like the music industry and stuff like that. But once this came out, all hell broke loose because Jessie Slaughter was on many different websites. She was on MySpace, she was on Sticky Drama, she was on 
kind of teach her about life, and also they were kind of proud of her that she had friends in the music scene. And she just wanted it to end. Because Jesse Slaughter and Davi Vanity's relationship was outed and leaked online, Jesse Slaughter received a lot of cyberbullying, and it progressed over time. She did make a video response saying, and it was one of the famous ones, I will pop a Glock in your mouth and make a brain slushy. And that shows a lot of influence that Davi had on her. Because you don't necessarily hear a lot of kids, especially back then, say stuff like that. I mean, I have heard Blood on the Dance Floor's music. It is very violent, and I don't understand why teens like it, but um, that's just me. Anyway, her address was leaked online as well, and she was getting packages like tampons. She was swatted a lot, and she had like a bunch of pizza places kind of calling her and saying, hey, do you actually want to order 200 pizzas? And they're like, no. You know, we're being pranked, and because of her being pranked and being cyberbullied, they kind of just gave her free pizzas out of empathy for her. And um, Damien does say that that wasn't a very bad thing for them uh, to have, like, free stuff. You know, that was kind of a, a good thing that came out of that situation. But... At some point, the cyberbullying does progress, and a second video is made. And it is a one of another famous one that um, has her father in it. And this one is where the whole thing, like the meme and the song You Done Goofed came from. Her father rants, trying to defend his daughter about everything that's been going on in her life, saying all of this is lies, all of this is wrong, I backtraced everything, and I've reported it to the cyber police and everything like that, and it's become a big joke now, actually. But in reality, her father was arrested. Her father, I know, died of a heart attack, I think. So this, I mean, even behind this joke, there's such a dark dark turn for the, her whole life and it's terrible um i know he has a charge that um her father punched her in the mouth and that's why he got arrested i'm not sure if that's true but jess ends up going into foster care or into social services and um she lives in a new home and her life was basically torn apart because of this. And years later, she ends up making another video apologizing because of, you know, everything that was going on. Apparently that wasn't supposed to be online, and uh, one of her friends at the time decided to post it on YouTube. Jesse Slaughter now goes by Damien Lee and Hart now, and they use they-them pronouns. Damien did talk about the intimate conversations that Javon Monroe and them had at the time. Jesse Slaughter was suffering from a certain sickness that we don't know. We That's none of our business. And Jesse decided to confide in Jay about this. And at some point after the fiasco... Jesse ends up hearing a lyric from a song, another song, about something that she told Jay in confidence. And now, as far as I know, Jay Von Monroe denies ever knowing Damien at all. And to me, I feel like that is very irresponsible, especially in this case. Jay Vaughn Monroe, you were interviewed by Chris Hansen. 
um, about this issue and you came forth saying that he did victimize girls and you decide to deny the existence of one fan that is very, very primary in this situation. I don't see how that's responsible. I don't see how that's very adult of you to do. And I really hope that you do come forward and start talking about this because I mean, Damien doesn't hold anything against you, as far as I know, as far as I've seen from the interviews. I just want people, especially Javon Monroe, and especially Jeffree Star, because he was also interviewed, just to tell the truth. Your past does not define you and what you did. It's your present that you need to start taking care of, and Davi Vanity is still living in his past. His past is his present. And I feel like people need to understand that their re reputation in this situation is not more important than the lives that were victimized. And I feel like if you made a mistake, just own up to it. Just say that you made a mistake. Say that you didn't say something. Say that you didn't speak up to Davi Vanity. I mean, yeah, it's gonna make... It's gonna be a big deal right now since social media is very brutal with this situation. But it will die down once things are taken care of. It should never be an either-or situation when it comes to someone telling the truth about a case. You either tell the whole truth or deny even having the interview. I don't feel like if you are going to lie in an interview, you shouldn't even be interviewed at all. That's basically what I'm trying to say. And I will be talking about Jeffree Star later on, maybe in one of the other parts of the series, because this will be a, a maybe a three-part series, depending on um, how many victims and how many uh, survivors I want to start talking about. So, yeah. And as far as my opinion on Divey Vanity, bro, get help. Seriously, you do not need to be fondling children. You don't, you don't need to be having sex with teenagers. You were a grown man. You're 30 now. About maybe, what, 33, 34? Grow the frick up. Own up to your mistakes and be a man. Take off that silly ass makeup and be a man. Alright? If you really want to redeem yourself, be a man. Admit to what you've done. That's it. Have a good day, everybody.